Hello and welcome to the Listening Post, brought to you by the Council for Drug-Free Youth. I'm Joy Sweeney, Executive Director of the Council for Drug-Free Youth, and with me today we have Mel Richardson, Uplift Director of the Council for Drug-Free Youth. Welcome, Mel. Thank you for having me, Joy. Thanks for joining us today. I'd love it if you could just share with us a little bit about yourself and also your new role with the Council for Drug-Free Youth as our project coordinator. Absolutely. Well, I'm Mel Richardson. Um, I have lived in Jefferson City for the last um, almost 19 years, actually. Moved from the state of California. I have three sons. One just got married and graduated from the Air Force Academy. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and one just went off to college, and my baby's a sophomore. So that's just a little bit about me. And what brought you to the Council for Drug for Youth? Well, I started facilitating back in 2009, I believe, which is facilitating programs that we have, as you know, like um, COPE and TEAM and Baseline for um, the students in the schools. Okay, in the 7th, 8th, and 9th grade, the 7th and 8th and 9th grade programs. And then ultimately you transition to our Uplift Director. Tell us a little bit about the Uplift program. Well, Uplift stands for Underage Prevention Leadership Involvement for Teens. And it's a group of ninth grade students who get together over the summer and they create their own skits after researching information about alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs. And they find what they believe to be the most relevant information that sixth graders should know. Okay. And they develop these skits and then we actually come here to JCTV and film them. And then in the fall, they go around to schools, to the middle schools, and perform them for the sixth graders. And after they perform them, they break down into um, groups with the sixth graders, and the sixth graders come up with their own skits and then perform them for everyone. It's a really awesome interactive program. And how are the sixth graders, do they receive these very well, or are they engaged in the process? Or? They are, absolutely, because they learn the information and from the uplifters who are presenting their skits. So they might come up with facts or statistics or something that they're able to incorporate into their own skits with their own ideas, so they're getting to see some different sides of it. And it's really nice to have the mentoring of the ninth grade students with the sixth grade students. Good you, role modeling. Role modeling. The ninth graders are role modeling for the sixth graders. Yes. That's awesome. And do you feel, I mean, you've been doing this now, Uplift Director, for four or five, four years? I think this is my fourth year. Yeah, because I know I, we started the program five years ago, so yes. And um, do you feel that this is a, an engaging, I know we've modified the program a little bit every year to try and incorporate the students a little bit more, get parent feedback, get teacher feedback, and get feedback from various sources. Do you really feel like this is engaging them in understanding the information? Because I know a lot of times we feel like we're just pushing it out, pushing it out, and they're not really in processing, I guess. Right. I think it is because it's a fun, interactive way. They enjoy watching the skits, and they're not, um, you know, they're not some, like I know now with advertising and things, a lot of the campaigns are very aggressive and a little frightening, and these skits are put more in sort of a, a way that is fun and engaging for students to watch and to get the message that, you know, making choices using alcohol and drugs are not going to lead to good outcomes. And I think that that's something that the sixth graders can identify with. And when the ninth graders are creating their scripts, they're creating them with sixth graders in mind, knowing, thinking, because it's not too far uh, before that they were sixth graders themselves, and sort of knowing what the middle schooler mentality is and what they would appreciate. Like just for an example, um, this year um, one of the skits is about the, it's called Ganja Go and it's based on like the Pokemon Go game. So <laughs> okay. that's, and, and so that's sort of, you know, they're able to really incorporate things so that 
the middle schoolers are paying attention and therefore getting the facts and getting engaged and then wanting to do their own. Right, and it's timely. It's not something from the 70s or way right. back in the dark ages. It's, it's what's happening right now. Right. So it really connects and processes with the sixth graders. And so do you feel like the ninth graders are getting anything out of it? I think they do. They really, really like it. When we go to some of the bigger schools, like for example, Lewis and Clark and Thomas Jefferson, that's a big audience. Audience compared to some of the smaller schools that we go to and those always consistently seem to be their favorites because they really there's a lot of energy the kids are excited it's a it's a really good vibe and and usually we do um, we like to do that one of those middle schools first to, st to kick off our touring on a good note because it really gets them pumped up for the rest of the performances and so you think they feel like they're having an impact they are. I definitely feel like because always they ask if there's more that they can do, if there's a way we can continue to engage them, if they could maybe, you know, do come back and do it again or keep, you know, in contact with these students so that, you know, they want to see how they go. And I think it's good to see to, to have these role models set in place as kids are making their way up the grade levels. Right, because these ninth graders will be seniors when the sixth graders are in high school, yes. too. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting, too, because then they will really be their oldest peer role models in high school. Right. In a lot of these cases. So that's fascinating. I'm, I'm glad. And what, have we done anything? I know you and I have talked about some ways that they can be peer ad ambassadors and, and be more involved. What have the kids, we decided we were going to let the kids, the students, come up with uh, some ideas. What are some of the ideas that they've thrown out that they'd like to do? I think that they're, um, I think we're still, you know, sort of in the infancy and coming up with how we can implement them, but um, the students would like to do maybe some sort of peer-to-peer -peer groups where they could, you know, individually go in there. I know that the um, uplifters are hoping to maybe even come here to make another video, informational video that they could get out to the middle schools. I know they have a lot of things, um, announcements at the middle schools oh. first thing in the morning, and if we were able to make Make a video it might be something fun interactive that so that they would know that they're still thinking about them even after we've come to their school to perform oh, okay right? or kind of like a message from CDFY uplifters how are you doing or something like that right because sometimes it's hard to get students all together and get them you know the ninth graders out of their own activities and to set up things but I think that there's there's ways that we can engage through social media through you know videos that we send them to them and you know just something that we can keep them all engaged. To make sure that they know that we're still thinking about them and remind them to continue thinking about making positive choices, right? Right. Awesome. Well, that's really clever that, and the students came up with this suggestion. And I think too, it would be, um, you know, possibly getting, you know, keeping, because when, the, when we perform for the sixth graders, they get super excited because then there's a possibility that they could become uplifters. So it's something that they have to look forward to, to become one day. So the sixth grade, Per, you know, kind of aspire to be those ninth grade role models right. at some juncture. And that's really exciting. So to try to keep them inspired so that when the time comes, you know, we can get them too. A lot of those sixth graders, they come up with the skits and they don't have very long. I mean, the uplifters have um, the summer to work on their skits, but these kids, when we go to perform at the schools, they've got about 20 minutes to come up with some up something, and some of them are amazing what they come up with in a short amount of time. Of how they're going to combat it and how they would respond to either what, what are some of the topics that you, you mentioned these skits several times. What are some of the topics that these skits surround? Well, when we break into the groups, each one of our uplifters, there's usually between 10. This year we have um, about 20 total because we've expanded our program to Osage County as well. Yes. So um, what we do is each uplifter will have a specific topic. One would be alcohol, bullying, um, heroin, maybe meth, marijuana, tobacco. So the uplifter would get in the group with these sixth graders. Maybe they might have, depending on how, what school we're at, 10, to, you know, about 10 sixth graders to work with, and that's what they come up. So they say, here's alcohol. Let's review the facts that we've given you, and how could you put these facts into your own skit. Okay, and then the, the sixth graders 
all work together with the supervision of the ninth graders right. to come up with a skit and then do they get an opportunity to perform them? Yes, then they then we all sit down with our within our groups and form an audience and then they go up on the stage and then they present it. And they come up with some really clever ideas about how to express it. I mean, obviously sometimes they might be inspired by the uplifters and give a similar theme or whatever, but for the most part, they're really coming up with innovative ways to um, to express these facts in an interesting, engaging way. And and do do any of the skits involve responding to peer pressure or responding to some of the challenges of drugs in the community? Yes, especially like our bullying. Usually, when we do our bullying skits, we always ask students how many times they've been bullied. You know, who's been bullied? What? Because that is a big problem, especially in the middle schools. That seems to be consistently what we hear is kids are being bullied or having a problem with that and so a lot of times they um, they really you know express that and, and interact with the audience like how many of you have been bullied how many of you have ha had this happen to you or know someone who's been bullied right. or and what are ways you can what can you do to stand up and, and they answer the questions and say you know what can what can we do to not be bullied do can we tell a teacher can we you know, walk away, that's always an option. If it's cyberbullying, you can always report them. You know, so there's a lot of different you know, avenues. We make sure that they understand where they can get the resources they need while we're there if any of these things are happening with drugs or alcohol or bullying or anything. We want to make sure that as CDFY representatives, we're providing them resources as well as information. And so when you walk away, they're left with the tools that they need to be um, positive, influences on their peers, but also have a positive influence in their life so that they're not struggling alone and isolated. Because so often, that's one of the things we hear is that, you know, they feel lost or alone or bullied. And that's one of the things that leads to drug use. It also leads to suicide. It leads to some of the challenges that we... It does. And that's a very, that demographic, that age group, is it's a, that's a very prevalent, you know, time in their lives where these things are, are important issues that they're facing right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, very high risk age group, yes, right? You know, is. I know I've had somebody say, well, what makes you know a child at risk? And I said, sometimes it's just their age. Right, you know? yeah, right. <laughs> it's it is. nothing else other than they're in middle school right now and yes. that makes them at risk. <laughs> right, so I think it's, we've got one of our uplifters, in fact, um, suggested that we have cards or something that we could leave that they could contact us like, or contact the uplifters in their group or something. So that might be something down the line we work out to with like a peer-to-peer -peer counseling or peer-to-peer. -peer. I think often peer-to-peer -peer programs work really well because they can identify with someone closer to their own age, you know, versus an adult telling them, don't do drugs. Right, right. And, and they're more willing and more likely to reach out Yes. and connect rather than feeling intimidated by that you right. know well i'd love to chat with you a little bit more about okay. this but we're going to take a brief break and we'll be right back okay thank you for listening we'll be right back with mel richardson mm -hmm. two o'clock okay your employees who serve in the National Guard and Reserve may seem different. They may work a little harder, be more confident, more willing to make the extra effort to get the job done right. So when your employees need time off to serve, remember, it's not just good for our country, it's good for your business. Glad you could all make it. Laura says we should start worrying about drinking at these things. They're only 12. I know. I'm just glad you know better, sweetheart. You're too smart for that, right, honey? Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% tried by the eighth grade. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. Welcome back to The Listening Post. I'm Joy Sweeney and with me here today is Mel Richardson. 
Thanks again, Mel, for being here. Thank you for having me, Joy. Oh, well, as we were just talking a little bit about Uplift. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do um, evaluative-wise? For I know we do surveys of the children as well as parents, and I think we even get some surveys back from some of the teachers as far as feedback to how in, to improve the programs and what they feel is successful, what they feel like they would like to see more or less of? Right. So whenever we go in and do a program, we always um, hand out a survey for the sixth graders to take afterwards so that we do get feedback. We want to be sure that they are engaged and that they're learning and that they're retaining information and that our programs are relevant to um, and keep updating them as necessary to keep them engaged. So we have a short survey that students fill out. It's anonymous. So, you know, that tends to be you get very honest feedback when it's anonymous. <laughs> Um, and so they, they fill out a short survey and then um, we also have the teachers so that they can, and theirs is a little bit more extensive and we ask them to give us feedback and, and some things to maybe improvements we could make. And then um, we also do a parent survey so we encourage the kids. Um, the uplifters encourage the kids, go home and have your parents fill out the online survey. And so that way we can know that the students that watch the skits are going home and discussing what they saw with their parents to try to really make it a whole community involvement. And why do you think it's important to have the parent component of, of this? Well, it's important that parents understand that we are in the schools and we are trying to, you know, raise awareness about drug and alcohol use and the dangers of it for students and it's important for parents to engage in conversations with their students. I mean that's where it starts is at home to help get the you know the, that there's an open line of communication that's really helpful for students to have that with their parents. So I think it's a great way when the kids go home to say mom, dad, can you take this online survey? It opens up the doors for a conversation and I think that's really important. Right, because if they're not talking to the students about this, then who is talking? Where are they getting their information? Right. Either on the internet, which we know has so much accurate information, or from their peers, or from who knows right. where the information is coming. And it's really good for them to understand what their parents' perspective is. I know that right. in all the years of research, we found that parents are the number one influence. Exactly. And I think it's a great way to start, um, for kids to start a conversation because if the parents, when they read the story, they say, oh, so you learned about this, or tell me a little bit about this. And I think it's great because students, you know, then the sixth graders can give their parents a perspective from their angle, what they're facing. Sometimes as a parent, it's very different. It's, from when I was a sixth grader to compared to what their uh, sixth graders today are, for example. And sometimes parents, myself being one of them, you can forget. And you can forget how difficult of an age it is and what peer pressure is like and the challenges that you're faced. So I think it's an important conversation that we're sparking by having these surveys presented to the students. Right, and the parents, you right. know, because then it just kind of triggers, oh, maybe I should talk to them about that, or, right. gosh, I'm so glad that my child came home and told me about, I mean, I always get enthusiastic when I would find out that my child came home, yes, I knew about that, yay, right. and they communicated something to me, especially in middle school, I know I felt like um, going from elementary to middle, I was just totally cut out of the loop, because if my child didn't bring home something, you know, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> right. And this is a great way to really engage the kids and the parents to have to start a conversation. Right, right. And I, I really, I'm glad, I'm so thrilled to have you as our Uplift Director. Mm -hmm. um, but now, your new role, transitioning into the Project Coordinator yes. for Council for Drug for Youth. What, um, what do you see this role encompassing and how do you feel like you as the project coordinator for Council for Drug for Youth can impact our community? Well, I think as project coordinator, I'm really going to try to design and come up with projects and activities where we can really engage our youth because our mission statement is about empowering youth and that's what I want to do. And I think that we've got a lot of students um, in our community who have chosen to be drug and alcohol free 
and who want to be empowered and have a venue in which, uh, and a platform in which they can speak their mind. Um, I was uh, facilitating a program baseline earlier this summer and there was a student in there, he was a football player and he was talking about the drug testing and he felt like if um, one of the players was you know, tested positive for drugs, he should be kicked off the team because um, this student didn't want to be on the field with someone who was doing drugs. He said, I take care of myself. I don't want to be injured by someone who doesn't have um, control of their coordination or their, what they're doing, and I don't want to be injured, and I don't want you know, something to happen because someone else's choices. And I thought, wow, that's someone who really needs has a voice and is self-advocating and that's so important. And so I think I would, I'm hoping to get into activities that can engage children to know that they can, that it is okay to say, I'm drug free, I'm drug and alcohol free and, and, and that's okay. Right, and, and encourage others, you know, especially like you said, this young man's a football player, other people that are, you know, on student council or, or the, you know, in the, the choir or the show choir or whatever that are involved in other activities or just academically don't want to deter their college opportunities. Right. But those children are always so busy. Right. How do we reach them? How do we bring them into the fold? Well, I think one of the things, and we're trying to get, um, I'm trying to establish um, where we can have maybe sort of interns or ambassadors that are students that can do things. Um, one thing we're, um, I'm trying to set up as project coordinator is um, sort of a, uh, where students can maybe take over some social media sites and do things like Pinterest is considered the ideal me and you know a lot of people put like for the ideal me the perfect clothes the perfect furniture or wh whatever but I think we can have the ideal drug free me and have them contributing things to show what a drug free life looks like and something that they're that they can have ownership of that they're doing and I think that engages them and gets their word out and their voice heard which is something they can do from home they don't have to come to a meeting they don't have to this is something they can collaborate on um, you know, the schools, um, at least the public schools here, have provided a lot of the students with the iPads. They've got the technology. They've got the knowledge. So I think that that's a way that they can really express themselves. So that's something that I'm trying to work with them right now. And it is. It's hard when kids are in, and it's good that kids are engaged and right. busy and stuff. I mean, <laughs> obviously, that's awesome. But so I'm trying to find things that, that, aren't, that don't, you know, ha take them away from that, but also allow them to have a voice. Right. Don't, they don't require a ton of time away from where they have to, like you said, come to another meeting or be another place at a specific time and date, but still allow their voices to be heard. Right. That's incredible. Great. That's a great idea. I'm and really excited. And also, I am too. And I'm, I'm also I'm really trying to um, get students, um, especially in our programs like the Uplift and the Safety Kids and Show Me the Players, all these student volunteers, to try to help out with activities that we go to so that when... We're at um, the Multicultural Festival or the um, you know, United Kids Fun Fest or any of these things that we've got students that you know, are students out there helping out and spreading the word about Council for Drug Free Youth and really engaging and showing how fun it is because it is. It's an awesome organization to work for and it's an awesome organization to be a part of. And the youth get to share their experiences. So it's not just about um, us telling people what it's like. It's about them sharing what they actually do um, rather than me saying, you know, they're doing this, this, and this. They can be, we get to do da 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 Right. But also, we need you to, like, give us all the information, and you're, you're, I mean, you're our fearless leader that really helps us to understand, like, where our vision is and, and what it is that we, you know, want to help spread the word about. So I think that that's, that's really necessary. And I just think as project coordinator, I really want to bring things to the table that engage not just our youth, but our community as well, because it takes... Uh, a coalition of people to help keep our community healthy and drug free. Right, right. Well, and I love how we are partnered with Lincoln on some things. We've yes. got some upcoming partnerships with Lincoln. Do you want to share a little bit about some of those exciting opportunities? I do. Well, um, the former project coordinator, Laura Morris, has set up a um, assembly at the middle schools, which we're partnering with Lincoln. So at Thomas Jefferson and Lewis and Clark, we're going to have a stay in the game 
basketball assembly and um, we're fortunate that we're going to have some of the LU basketball players come and then we've got some celebrity guests from the community. Mayor Carrie Turgeon will be one of them. Yay. Uh, yes. <laughs> with um, uh, lots of other people. I don't want to have too many good boys but it'll be um, a really exciting all school assembly so the, the entire school will be engaged and we're really looking forward to it. This is going to be in September, so I think it's going to be a really awesome event. So will you be at Lewis and Clark and Thomas Jefferson on different days in the middle of September then? Yes. So okay. the, yeah, so and that's going to be good. And um, the, the Lincoln basketball players, of course, can't play because of the right. rules, but they can still come and they can help mentor and they can show. And basically the idea of this stay in the game um, idea is that if you stay in the game by staying off drugs, you can have a successful life. You can be the successful people in our community. You can be a you know successful basketball player on a yeah. basketball team. You can be the mayor. You can be, I mean, lots of community members. We've got police officers. We've got lots of people that are going to be there showing what it means to stay in the game and stay off drugs and how it's a good thing. So I think it's good to have the role models to show that to the kids. Right. Yeah. The adult role models showing how they stayed in the game, right. and this is where that this is the path that, that, that they followed because of that. That's right. awesome. And then kind of we're going to maybe do things to sort of thread that through the stay in the game, so that we can kind of continue that message throughout the year, okay. and keep you know keep sort of sending that back to Lewis and Clark. Send it out in in September, and then follow it through everything that we do throughout the year yes. with them. Awesome. And then I know we've got something coming up in October. Right. That's our annual. This will be the second annual yes. video contest. So um, students will be able to submit a video that they make about, um, well, our theme this year is don't let drugs destroy your dreams. <laughs> So um, they can really pretty much pick any drug they want. It could be alcohol, tobacco, marijuana, whatever they feel passionate about. Because students, some people have personal stories that they feel, you know, is mm -hmm. important right. to them that they want to share. So it's a video that's 30 seconds to two minutes long, and they submit it online. And then we're going to have the big event October 24th at the high, the Little Theater at the high school where we view them and have them judged and give away cash prizes. So yeah. it's going to be super exciting. And then didn't we decide this, I think, the kids or you, I don't remember who came up with the decision that we were going to have one online winner this year? I think so, yeah. I think we're going to, we're still trying to set that up at the website, but yes. And we will, yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be really interactive and get people excited. I think last year, kids didn't really know, but like I said, a lot of the, um, you know, students now have iPads and phones. You can make a video on your phones, and kids do it all the time. So it seems like a good venue, and I think it's going to be something that they're going to be excited about. Well, maybe we'll have to come back and share some of those videos yes. on the listening post. Huh? I think so. <laughs> well, Mel, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. This thank is you. fun. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing about all the fun things that you're doing, and we love having you. We're so grateful for your enthusiasm and your brilliant ideas. We're, we're truly appreciative. And thank you for listening to The Listening Post brought to you by the Council for Drug-Free Youth.